Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll take a look at a rare book titled Costumes of South America by Eduardo Luz, with a preface by Dorothy Shaver, published in 1941 in New York by French and European publications. Dorothy Shaver wrote, Today, as the world is being moved more rapidly towards mass production, we, who are concerned with the designing accomplishments of our country, must encourage any records that will preserve source material for future designing. However efficient the machines of our mass productions, however amazing the development of new materials, the creative force behind these machines, these developments, will have to come first from individual creative effort. In the passing of native costumes, in the losing of that closeness to life as it is lived in various countries, something human and charming is being lost. For the designers of the future, works of this kind are necessary to preserve the knowledge of forms of life fast disappearing. In this country, now face to face with its own designing ability, we find the colorful source material of our neighbors in the South American republics rich in costumes of ineffable beauty. We are fortunate to have this material collected in so convenient a form for ready reference and inspiration. And we are thankful to Mr. Eduard Dalouz for his faithful documentation of these beautiful and inspiring costumes. Argentina Gaucho with Boleadoras The costume of the gaucho is always striking. It consists of a short jacket and trousers of fine white linen. A shawl which falls from the waist in back is caught up between the legs and fastened in front to a leather belt, covered with designs or with old coins, and held by the rastra or buckle. In Argentina there is virtually no national costume for women. The traditional dress of the old colonial period survives only on the stage. A gaucho of the Pampas, wearing a long red blouse over his trousers. The lance is used in rounding up the wild cattle. The Tehuelche Indians of the extreme south in Argentina love vivid colors and show great skill in the way they weave the bright shawls which they wear so gracefully. Bolivia Near Lake Poopo, in the department of Oruro, the Kichas, descendants of the Incas, wear a simple poncho of wool vividly striped and fastened around the waist with a thick rope. The Cholas of La Paz, who are of mixed blood, wear elaborately embroidered shawls and peculiar white straw hats with very high crowns, tonguito, stiffly varnished. In the same region, the natives adorn themselves with a profusion of jewelry, particularly with topos, or brooches which spear their shawls. From the most beautiful topos, sometimes suspended, are little silver fish. The cholas also wear the polka, a fitted jacket in bright colored velvet with a deep fringe. Indian girl from Potosí the once famous silver city of the Spanish crown. There is a noticeable attempt at decorative effect in the headgear of the girls, and the familiar silver spoon ornaments are prominently displayed. In parts of Bolivia's high plateau, fiesta fashions among men call for flowing white robes, large floral or effeminate looking head dresses, and long reed pipes which play their part in the plaintive music. Indian girl from the Quechua tribe in the mountains near Oruro. The style of the dress of these natives have known but little change for hundreds of years. The plaiting of their hair is very elaborate and sets off their strong Indian features. Members of this tribe are Roman Catholic and often wear rosaries as jewelry. 
a dancing Indian woman wearing a grey derby. Below a tight bodice, skirt overlaps skirt like gigantic petals, dark reds clashing with the violent oranges. Gaudily dressed musicians ready for the fiesta. Some have the curious custom of slitting their trousers to show the white undergarment. The circular headgear in the background is suggestive of drums that have suffered too vigorous a beating. Indian from Cabina, in the region of the Rio Grande. He wears an elaborate headdress with four large tassels and gaudy feathers. The long white robe shows the influence of the Catholic missions that have been established for centuries in these distant regions. Brazil, Indian girl of the Chama tribe near the Rio Grande. The skirt is very plain, but attractively embroidered in simple red designs. Juanian Indians, Mato Grosso, wear long skirts of fiber decorated with red designs, Uruku, a short jacket of the same material and bright feathers in their hair. In Bahia, the Bahian wear a very long, full, ruffled skirt with a white blouse over it. She is fond of earrings, necklaces of all colors and sizes. A white turban completely covers her head. Indian of Pauserna, with a colorful fiesta head dress, fastened under the chin by a necklace composed of long strands of hemp cording in dried seeds. The ornament has become the costume. Chile The manto is an item of dress peculiar to the women of Santiago. A thin black fabric is drawn over the head, then draped and pinned around the neck. Its graceful folds cover most of the costume. An Araucanian woman of southern Chile. The natives wear gracefully draped capes and are fond of huge silver ornaments like the earpiece shown here. The Chilean Huaso is very proud of his own costume. The Huaso's hat is a sombrero with a wide, straight brim trimmed with a rosette and streamers. His suit consists of corduroy trousers and a very short, tight jacket with two long tassels trailing in back. Near Valparaiso, in this typically Chilean landscape covered with fantastic cactus, we find the rough country carriers, or arrieros. They wear the poncho, but a smaller one that is seen in other parts of South America. Colombia In Colombia, the skirt is short, wide and tight at the waist, with a plain blouse in pastel shades. Colors are dark, but always harmonious. Alpargatas are usually worn. The straw hats present a great variety of designs. In the mountains of Colombia, the women wear the montera, headgear of dark colored felt. In the background, there passes an arriero in a large straw hat, wearing a long white blouse over his trousers. Hyanacato Indian These Indians from the Rio Macayo wear a kind of corset made from the bark of a tree. This corset compresses the torso and the abdomen. It is not unusual among the Hyanacato Indians to color their face and pierce their ears and nose. Dutch Guiana The native costume of the Kota Missi consists of a great, stuffy starched skirt and bolero jacket, a blouse with white strings hanging down in the back. On the head is worn a gigantic turban twisted into an odd shape. Ecuador In the Otavalo region, the feminine silhouette is very slim and straight. 
The women wear an underskirt of bluish grey, heavily embroidered, and over this the anaku, a sort of half slip revealing the underskirt on one side. The waist is tight and encircled by a wide variegated Inca belt. The Otavalo Indian is taller and more robust than other South American Indians. His peculiar headgear is handmade of felt, hardened to the consistency of plaster. Its weight is intended to withstand the high winds of this region. Young Indian playing the famous rondador, a variety of pande and pipes made of reeds, the national musical instrument of the natives of Ecuador. The melodies are simple and monotonous, the strains repeated over and over. In the Otavalo region, the women wear the grey rebozo over their shoulders, and married girls carry it on the left side. The Ecuadorian Indians wear much more jewelry than those of Peru. They like dog collars made of gold beds and a multitude of rings and necklaces. They use the large upturned hat brim to carry their small purchases. Panama The beauties of Panama wear the poliera which resembles a ball dress. It is of white cotton, embroidered and scalloped in color, with deep ruffles on the skirt and around the edge of the bodice. Panamanian women wear a great number of gold necklaces, bracelets and rings. Clusters of flowers and pearls are arranged on either side of the head. Patagonia This Patagonian Indian, standing in front of his family Toldo, is holding the bolas, that ingenious Argentine country vans for bringing down horses and cattle at a distance. It consists of a short length of rope, weighted at the ends with balls of stone. A rich colored shawl covers his shoulders and torso. Peru Indian porter of southern Peru through the rugged mountain passes, these men travel at a steady gait, carrying heavy loads for long distances. Their ponchos always show a marvelous arrangement of colors and designs. A woman of Sicuani carrying her baby on her back. She is seen here with her llamas, preparing for a trip in the high Andes. These animals provide the oldest method of transportation known to South America. This woman is wearing a tight jacket over several skirts, presenting a billowy silhouette. The costume is topped by an amusing headdress. Peruvian Indian of Tinta A flat straw hat, not unlike that of a Chinese coolie, is superimposed upon a bright knitted cap with tassels and ear tabs. A colorful traditional poncho covers the shoulders. Peruvians call these forest Indians salvajes or savages. Their skin coloring varies from the lightest copper to very dark tints. As for clothing, it is chiefly conspicuous by its absence but bodies are dubbed with bright colors or tattooed with elaborate designs in white. Woman of Huancaya Huancayas celebrate the fiesta of their city's patron saint decked out in colorful robes, elaborately embroidered with beautiful flowers or scenes of Spanish inspiration, such as bullfights. Peruvian shepherd wearing a wrap-around skirt in the old Inca fashion and the traditional knitted bonnet or chulio of the Andes. In Cusco, the chulio is knitted in highly colored walls, while around Lake Titicaca and in Bolivia, it is found in plain dark greens, reds or in a bright pink. Around Cusco, the skirt is frequently dark blue or black. 
The poncho is woven at home in bright colored wool. Designs and methods of weaving have not changed in the past four centuries. On the coast of Peru, market women often wear Panama hats of a remarkable quality and full skirts of colorful cotton prints mounted on ponies and donkeys with great cans tied to their saddles. They ride about the streets delivering milk. In Tinta, as in Cusco, the skirts are dark, the jackets covered with interesting designs in braid or colored buttons, and the undervest embroidered in vivid gules. The hats are wide brimmed. This woman is spinning the vicuña wool, using a method known to her ancestors in Inca times. Venezuela in Venezuela, there is little local color, except in the savanna, among the Incas. But in the more civilized regions, women wear a rather conventional and becoming dress. A printed cotton skirt, a white cotton blouse and a large straw hat trimmed with clusters of flowers. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.